We are talking about the latest Detroit Lions news here. We're going to give you an update on C.J. Garner Johnson. Great news. Teddy Bridgewater is in Detroit visiting the Lions here. Could the Lions look to sign him? What does it mean for the other quarterbacks on the roster? And we're going to get into observations from training camp. Let's go. Do you want more Lions information and may not be in video form? Then go to my Facebook, add me as a friend, Mike Kimber on there. I'm dropping information on there. I did it right for the C.J. Garner Johnson information. So go ahead and get me on Facebook. Then we get some more info for you. So injury news here. C.J. Garner Johnson, folks, avoided a major injury. Awesome news. Fantastic news. The prayers work, folks. And he's just going to miss a couple days. Big sigh of relief for the Lions, Lions fans, the coaches, and everybody. C.J. Garner Johnson is going to be very integral towards the Lions' development in the secondary, going from poor to good. We need him on the field. So, so, so happy about this one. We do have some injuries, though, to talk about there. No changes on the injury report when it comes to Hendon Hooker, the NFI list, Marvin Jones NFI list, Emmanuel Mosley pup list, and it looks like Jamison Williams as well could be missing a couple of days. So injuries there, not too bad. Expected to always have some bumps and bruises. That's what happens for Detroit Lions camp. Go ahead again. Add me on Facebook, Mike Kimber. Real easy to do. Search my name. Find me. Good to go when it comes to Lions information there. Let's get into Teddy Bridgewater here. The Detroit Lions are bringing him in for a visit today. All offseason, the speculation is the Lions would look to sign Teddy Bridgewater. Months and months ago, I kept talking about it. I said Teddy Bridgewater would be a target for them. Then we heard rumors that the Lions sent them a con- sent him a contract. And guess what? He's still unsigned. And now he's in Detroit, potentially to sign with the Lions. What does it mean? I think it'd be a pretty cheap deal if the Lions were to get Teddy Bridgewater. First off, he's still unsigned, and that is leverage that the Lions have. So he doesn't have that many options there. So that's good for the cap situation. He does have in-game experience. Unlike Nate Sudfeld, who barely has ever did any sort of snaps in the NFL, starting war a real game, Teddy Bridgewater has been on multiple teams, Denver Broncos, Minnesota Vikings, Miami Dolphins. He has experience. He's won games, something that they're probably looking forward to. But he does have some injury concerns. He has been injured throughout his tenure as a NFL player. I mean, if you look last year, he was injured multiple times for the Miami Dolphins. He was injured for the Vikings and the Denver Broncos. There's just something that was going on with him. And that is something that you've got to deal with with Teddy Bridgewater. Another aspect to his game is he brings, I think, veteran leadership to a team that may need it if a starter goes down. Again, you you can rely on somebody that's been in game experience except for somebody who has not. If they do sign... Teddy Bridgewater, remember that the Detroit Lions are looking to win now. So if Jared Goff goes down, that's why they would bring him in. It's you make all the depth on a roster on the 53 as best as humanly possible. Backup positions for any position, whether it be defensive line, linebacker, cornerback, offense, everything needs to be solid at the depth. That's why we have seen a... Big jump in the secondary. The depth's really good. We've seen better depth at the linebacker, the defensive line, offensive line, everywhere because they're ready to make a winning season now. This is not developing anymore. They want to win. And if Teddy Bridgewater comes here, it gives the backup role depth. It doesn't mean that Hendon Hooker is going to get released if you think that's the case. That absolutely would not be the case. They may really believe he's a red shirt year. And if he does sign with the Detroit Lions, they'll probably roll 
with Hennon Hooker, like you said, on the sideline and have Nate Sudfield and Teddy Bridgewater battle it out for QB2. And I would assume whoever wins that battle stays, who loses that battle gets cut. That's how it'd be. In all honesty, if the Lions sign Teddy Bridgewater, you have to give a massive edge to Teddy Bridgewater to win that backup role because of the experience, what he brings, and let's be honest here, folks. Do you Who would you trust better to back up Jared Goff? Nate Sudfield or Teddy Bridgewater? I think it's, it's common sense it would be Teddy Bridgewater. But I got a question for you. Would you guys sign Teddy Bridgewater? Put S for sign or P for pass? Let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking to sign him. I think it'd be a good idea, and I don't think it's going to be much money, so I'm going to go with sign. Let's go ahead and start with camp observations here. We'll start with the defense, then we'll get into the offense, and of course, good old special teams. And when it comes to stepping in in Gardner's absence, so some fun took place there. The intensity was much higher, and they dialed things a little bit good for us. As Tracy Walker, who kept rolling on the defense, increased his vocalness in the secondary. He discussed it, how he wanted to become more of a vocal leader. He finished the day with terrific interception of Sudfield. Over the top, punch and pass breakup from Jared Goff to Sam Laporta. It's also known that he came in after Gardner's injury. We've seen increased snaps from Brian Branch, of course, and Will Harris. And guess what? Dylan Drummond took a lot of bit of praise from Aaron Glenn, the undrafted free agent rookie. Good right there. We continue on here. Cam Sutton had a very technical, impressive breakup while covering Josh Reynolds. Really good. It was a great back shoulder throw by Goff, but Sutton was perfect position and made a beautiful play. Joshua Pascal got his hands on the ball in line of scrimmage, knocking the ball down quick from Sudfield. Pascal lined up opposite of Matt Nelson, who bull rushed him to the quarterback. Jack Campbell and Malcolm Rodriguez paired up by tackling loss, working their way to the second team offensive line. Safety Brady Breeze, who, yes, he is still on this team, also would have a sack delayed. Good job there. Let's go ahead and jump to the offense here. Goff's favorites. We know Jared Goff loves to throw to, and he guess what? He kept making a habit of throwing to Amon Ross, St. Brown, Josh Reynolds, Khalif Raymond, Jameer Gibbs, Sam Laporta, Brock Wright, and Jamison Williams, who is out for a couple of days. But Gibbs and Laporta firmly are showing themselves to be starters. They both split time with David Montgomery, right, respectively, but the rookies are dynamic options who gave this team love right now. Lions coaches award production so far, Gibbs and Laporta have been impressive. That's why the Lions got him with the 12th pick. That's why the Lions got Laporta in round two. They're going to make some moves. Colby Soresdale has been repping primarily with the third team, but saw some second team as well. Soresdale, last lineman off the field, as well as Levi and Uzurike getting some extra work. That's good to see. Antoine Green is not yet getting his turn repping with the starters group. He's showing up the second team, as you would expect. Hendon Hooker still under, under able to practice, but after practice, he's throwing balls, and he looks solid. Denzel Mims has been blowing up Blowing up training camp for the first time that he practiced. He really turned some heads. Already gotten the system known, <laughs> kind of known down, Mims told the media. Been coming early, staying late. Pretty much playmaking ability. His speed was magnificent. It was advertised. He showed, throw the deep ball underneath and caught it. And that was by Sudfield throw. His third catch, terrific one-handed reception. You can see it on Twitter. Or on YouTube, Mims making a sick play. Terrific showing by the newest Detroit Lion. Could the Lions have gotten a steal here? Could the Lions have gotten a steal with Denzel Mims? Even better than I expected. Oh my God, it's very possible. 
Halapludi Vati Vaitai continued to switch out reps with Graham Glasgow at the right guard position. Glasgow got the start, but Vati Vaitai's turn to start the, the next day. Expect these rotations to continue here. RB3's to appear close to follow it up, and Justin Jackson's coming in and starting to turn some heads as well. He was pretty good when he was, when he was healthy. Craig Reynolds and Jamar Jefferson was all getting in on there. A little bit fire under Reynolds, but then he turned up really well after that because he feels the heat that's taking place for his job. It's getting to special teams because they do matter as well. Jackson was a kick returner as well, followed by Maurice Alexander. I don't know if you guys remember him, but Khalif Raymond, Jameer Gibbs, and Jamar Jefferson. Jackson also worked as the starters on the team coverage. Both kickers, Riley Patterson and Parker Romo, were perfect on the day going 5-for-5 five five on kicks 32, 37, 39, 42, and 44. Each had one kick that was close to missing, but the other four were absolutely solid. The Detroit Lions training camp continues on and battles continue to be taking place and a lot of good observations that are happening. As you can tell, it feels like Lions training camp this year compared to last year and obviously the year before, it's starting to be really good. The players, both offense, defense, special teams, are really starting to f- kind of show that they're a playoff football team. Practice is getting better. Less sloppiness. That is a damn good thing for our team going into 2023. So, knock on wood, keep that thing going. Folks, Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Why is that? Because I talk Detroit Lions news every single day, and I give you the latest Lions news. We do this all the time. That's what this channel is about. With that said, folks, adios.